joining us here. We're all in. All right, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. I'm Alicia Cordes Mayo, the Communications Director at DEED. Really great to have so many press on the call with us today. A couple of housekeeping notes, um, just if you could keep your devices, computers muted, it really helps mitigate echoes. Um, if you have any technology questions, I will put an email address for Sam Clayton in the chat and you can reach out and ask Sam for some help. And um, just one more thing, uh, getting that off there. Um, excited to introduce someone new to you today. So uh, after the former commissioner, Steve Grove left, we are excited to have our new interim commissioner, Kevin McKinnon with us today, in addition to Angelina. So I'm gonna turn it over to Kevin shortly. He's gonna introduce himself just a little bit and then we'll get right into the data. So thanks so much for joining us and Commissioner McKinnon, over to you. Well, thank you, uh, Alicia, and thanks for all of you uh, for being here today. Um, I'm happy to share just a little bit about myself. Uh, I uh, am the temporary commissioner uh, of DEED. Um, while um, uh, the governor and lieutenant governor continue to search for a new DEED uh, commissioner. Um, just by way of background, I've been at DEED um, for about 16 years. Um, and um, most recently for about the past decade, uh, have been the deputy commissioner over economic development um, and research. And so my whole career has been in uh, economic development in uh, Minnesota, North Dakota, and uh, Colorado. Um, I am excited uh, to serve uh, in this role um, and, uh, and anxiously await uh, a new uh, commissioner uh, and, uh, and ready to serve at that point. Um, I think uh, now uh, I'd like to share uh, just a little bit of the big picture perspective on the January numbers, and then uh, I'll turn it over to Angelina uh, Wynn, who's our uh, Labor Market Information Director, uh, and really the expert on, on this data. It has been a little longer than usual between our releases. Um, and as a result, March is a busy month for us. We'll do two releases this month. Uh, today, we'll cover the annual um, benchmarking revisions along with January numbers, uh, and in a couple of weeks, we'll release the February job numbers. Uh, as uh, hopefully uh, many of you know, every March, DEED releases the revised employment numbers for the previous year, and these annual benchmarking revisions always result in shifts for some months of data for the unemployment rate, labor force participation rate, and the job count. These revisions happen for a number of reasons, uh, new population controls, new seasonal adjustment factors, and more comprehensive employment counts become available. But some highlights that I'd like to share um, about the job numbers. Minnesota's labor force participation uh, and unemployment rates are both up after annual revisions. Our labor force participation rate jumped to 68.1%, while our unemployment rate uh, after an estimated 1.8% uh, percent in June of last year was actually revised up to a low point in April uh, of 2.3 percent. This is still an all-time record low for Minnesota. We've had strong job growth uh, in January over December. We gained 14,000 jobs in January 2023 uh, on a seasonally adjusted basis or half a percent. This is the biggest month-to-month -month gain since February of 22. This means our labor market is still very tight, but not as tight as originally estimated. Deed will continue to do our outreach to Minnesotans who remain on the employment sidelines and utilize our programs and services to get people back in the workforce. Now, I will hand it over to Angelina for a closer look uh, at the data. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, hi, my name is Angelina Nguyen, uh, Director of Labor Market Information Office here at DEED. Um, I want to thank you, uh, or thanks to uh, Orianne Casal for doing these monthly data releases while I was on parental leave for a little bit there, and I'm happy to be back, and thank you for joining us this morning. Um, so of the 14,000 jobs that Minnesota gained in January, the, uh, the private sector gained 12,000 of those jobs, uh, which is also half of a percent. Um, so right now, um, as of the latest data, we have almost 3 million jobs in the state. Um, eight super sectors gain jobs. Um, some noteworthy growth include construction. Um, they gain 2,200 jobs. 
uh, professional and business services gained 6,600 jobs, education and health services gained 2,000 jobs, and government gained 2,100 jobs. Um, the revised data shows Minnesota lost uh, 416,000 jobs between February and April of 2020 due to the pandemic, and we have since regained 95.1% of those jobs lost. Uh, the private sector has regained 98.4% of the jobs that they lost. An unemployment rate um, stayed at 2.9% uh, in January as it did in December. Uh, the employment to population ratio stays steady at 66.1% for the fourth month in a row. Um, so compared to January 2020, three years ago, uh, pre-pandemic unemployment was 3.8%. Um, our January 2023 unemployment rate is almost one whole percentage point lower, um, indicating that we are still looking at a tighter labor market than uh, pre-pandemic. Next slide, please. Um, I'm going to touch briefly on the annual revisions. Um, so at uh, as, at this time every year, we as we have new data and um, more complete data, we go back and revise the original estimates for previous years. So two edits are worth mentioning. Um, the first is uh, unemployment rate, as Commissioner had uh, touched on. Um, it, it, the revised unemployment rate is higher than the original. Um, so the blue line is the revised. Um, we have thought uh, the original estimated that we had a uh, record low of 1.8 uh, in June, but the revised uh, numbers show that our record low was uh, 2.3 in April, um, which is still the lowest in Minnesota history. Um, and then after April, the unemployment rate climbed back up and we ended the year at 2.9% unemployment rate instead of 2.5 as originally estimated. Um, the second edit that's worth mentioning is our labor force was revised upwards as well. So we uh, had 11,387 more people in the labor force in December than we originally estimated. Um, the number of employed people was revised downward a little bit um, with about 1,300 less than originally estimated. Um, the number of unemployed was revised upwards. So we had an additional two 12,700 unemployed in December. Um, our labor force participation rate was revised higher um, for the last half of 2022 as well. So we ended the year um, at 68.1% labor force participation rate, which is 0.2% um, higher than the original estimate. So all of that means that our labor market is not as tight as we had thought, um, though it is still very tight. Next slide, please. So this is our revised labor force numbers and uh, participation rate. Um, the labor force size dropped a little bit with 1,374 fewer workers. And, and notice that our labor force now is smaller than it used to be before the pandemic. Um, so we have about 80,000 less workers. Um, the la labor force participation rates, the, the green line, remain um, the same at uh, 68.1 percent in January as it was in, in December and it has hovered around 67, 68 percent for a while. Um, Pre-pandemic it was near 71 percent. Next slide please. Now I'm going to dive into uh, demographic differences. Um, so due to smaller sample sizes, we use uh, the 12 month moving averages to look at unemployment rates by race. Uh, black and Hispanic workers experience higher unemployment than white workers. Um, so unemployment rates rose the most for black Minnesotans during the pandemic, and it fluctuates the most because um, black workers tend to ha have jobs that have high churn. Um, Hispanic and white workers have a similar trend line, although Hispanic unemployment tends to be uh, more than a full percentage point higher than uh, white unemployment. So as of January, um, the unemployment rate for whites was 2.2%. Uh, for black workers, was it was 3.6%. And for Hispanic workers, it was 3.3%. Next slide, please. 
And then we look at the 12 moving 12 month moving average uh, labor force participation rates by race. So except for the shock of the pandemic, um, black and Hispanic workers have higher labor force participation rates than white workers. Um, Hispanic workers labor force participation rate was the least impacted impacted by the pandemic because there's higher concentration of them in industries that were less affected by the shutdown. So industries like construction or agriculture or building maintenance, um, their labor force participation rate remain at a much higher rate than uh, other groups. So at 75.5% in January, uh, black workers labor force participation were most impacted by pandemic restrictions because they tend to have jobs that were um, in industries that were vulnerable to the to shut down. Um, their January labor force participation rate was 70.6%. Uh, white workers labor force participation rate was the least affected by the pandemic, um, but this group has continued to drop in labor force size and participation. Um, and that has accelerated since the pandemic. So in January, their labor force participation rate was, was at 67.5%. Um, so overall, all three groups have a lower labor force participation rates than they did um, before the pandemic. Next slide, please. So this slide goes back to 2002 to provide a longer term look at the trend. Um, so the second half of the graph is a month to month change starting in um, January 2022. So we see that both men's and women's labor force participation rates have decreased over time, uh, the two solid lines, largely because we have an aging population. Um, as of January 2023, men's labor force participation rate was 72.2% and women's was at 63.7%. Uh, women were hit harder during the pandemic in terms of their labor force participation rates and their unemployment rate. So their labor force participation rate went down, their unemployment rate went up. Um, in 2022, women's unemployment rate has declined faster than men's. It's the two dotted line. So women's is the blue dotted line. Um, and as of January, it's a full percentage point lower. So 2% compared to 3% uh, unemployment rate for men. Uh, this shows that women who are looking for work are more successful at getting a job, although less women are able to participate in the labor force um, by a difference of 8.5%. Next slide, please. Here we look at over the year jobs changed by super sector. So over the year, Minnesota gained 68,807 jobs, which is a uh, increase of 2.4%. The private sec sector gained 60,741 jobs, which is a 2.5% growth. Um, all of our super sectors had positive annual growth except for mining and logging. So a few noteworthy uh, changes are uh, leisure and hospitality uh, are is still seeing strong recovery from the pandemic and they posted the largest uh, job growth over the year um, with 20,770 jobs. And they uh, this super sector outpaced the national rate. So Minnesota grew 8.9% um, for leisure and hospitality uh, compared to 8.3% for the US. Um, education and health services also um, saw huge growth. They were the second largest um, over the year growing industry with uh, 14,461 more jobs, which is a 2.7% growth. Uh, government also posted positive growth over the year, um, up more than 8,000 jobs, which is a 2% growth. And we outpaced the US by one whole percentage point for that super sector. Nationally, jobs grew 3.6% over the year, um, and the private sector nationally grew 4.1%. Um, all the super sectors uh, show gain over the year um, for the US much stronger than uh, for Minnesota. Um, so overall, our state is growing, but at a slower rate than the nation, and it's mostly because we have a tight labor market. Next slide, please. So in terms of post-pandemic recovery, um, Minnesota has regained, uh, again, we've regained 95.1% of the jobs that we lost. 
um, and many sectors have recovered their jobs and then proceeded to gain even more jobs. So the ones with the green bars pointing to the right are the uh, sectors that are doing well. So arts, entertainment and recreation have gained 7.3% more jobs than they than they had lost. Transportation, warehousing and utility, utilities gained 7.1% jobs uh, after having recovered all the jobs that they lost and professional scientific and technical services gained 5.9 percent more jobs um, sectors that haven't recovered well are mining and logging financial activities and government um, they are still uh, have a ways to go for regaining the jobs that they lost next slide please and here we look at uh, wage growth and inflation. Uh, average hourly wages for all private sector workers rose uh, 46 cents in January over the month. Um, so over the year, wage growth, uh, we see 4.1% growth um, since, so over the year, and then over three years, so before the pandemic, um, they have grown 15.2% uh, nationally, the wage growth over the month was 1.6%, 4.4% over the year, and 16.8% over three years. So uh, compared to inflation, um, inflation rose 6.4% over the month, and then over three years, we've seen 16% inflation. So the yellow bar on this graph uh, is inflation as measured by um, the current price index. So you can see that um, most industries, all industries have seen wage growth, um, but many of them do not keep up with inflation. So that is all I have to share for this month, and we will now take any questions that you may have. Okay, Kavita, over to you, please. Good morning. Sam or Don? Um, oh, okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, okay awesome. <laughs> Hi, Angelina. Welcome back. <laughs> um, good to see you. Um, I guess I had a couple questions. One is um, with the revisions. What's the um, December uh, job loss gain? I think we initially was reported at 5,200, and I wasn't sure if it were still showing a negative um, December for overall job growth. Um, so that was one question. And the other one was, um, you know, I know that um, I I'm wondering if you can see like where other states have been revised yet. So I was just curious that, you know, we no longer had the lowest unemployment rate in U.S. history um, last year, but um, I was just wondering if we still think that like Minnesota's was the lowest in the nation at some points of last year, like we initially thought, or if it now appears that we were kind of maybe more, you know, uh, a little bit lower down or um, in the in the ranking. Yes. Uh, hi, hi, Kavita. Thank you for the great questions, as always. Um, so for December, um, uh, the revised uh, numbers, it was a was about the same as the original estimate. Um, so, but a little more. So we had 550 jobs um, more in December than originally estimated. And Orion, please uh, double check the numbers for me. Yeah, um, I, I can. I'm looking at them right now. I can just jump in if if that's helpful to you, Angelina. Um, we lost 7,500 jobs in December. Um, the seasonally adjusted revised and um that was a decrease of 0.3 percent that was thank you like 2,000 jobs more than initially reported not 500 right okay i'd have to it was 5200 <laughs> sorry, we can take this offline too. Um, Let's, yeah, if you don't mind, Kavita, yeah. sorry. I, I have that in a Kavita. different we'll follow place. <laughs> and then the second question about um, uh, lowest unemployment. So with the revised numbers, um, Minnesota is no longer the state with the lowest uh, unemployment. Um, I think South Dakota is, is now the lowest states with like I think 1.8 or 1.9% in um in 2022. Thanks Angelina. Thanks Ariane. Any other questions today? 
got a little bit of time down to the participant list to see. I think someone has their hand up. Ethan, over to you, please. Good morning. Hi, um, thanks for, for uh, taking questions. Um, yeah, you know, I was just curious, you know, it looks like I know numbers have been revised, but I was just taking a look at um, previous months um, unemployment rates, and it looks like we're a little bit higher than 2.9%, a little bit higher than we've been in, in recent months. I'm just wondering, I mean, just quickly, do we know any, have any thoughts on, on just like simple reasons why that might be? So the um, revisions are, let me, let me pull it up. Sure. So every, every year we revise because um, we get census data uh, for jobs numbers instead of um, incomplete estimates that we had used for the original uh, mm -hmm. calculation. So when we apply new population controls and we apply new seasonal adjustment factors and more um, complete employment counts, then that is the reason why um, the unemployment rate changed. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That, that's a good point. Okay. So we just had better data. Sure. Thanks, Angelina. Uh, let's see, Kavita, back to you. And you're on mute, Kavita. Hi, sorry. Can you hear? Okay, I'm back. Um, you know, I know at several points last year, um, you know, we were surpassing the level of job growth of the U.S., but now it looks like with the revisions, it looks like we are trailing quite a bit the U.S. in terms of job growth, like over the last year. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, I mean, did, did the revisions kind of really change sort of our standing compared to the U.S. in terms of job growth? So our revised job growth uh, is actually a little bit higher than our original um, estimates. And, and Orion, um, I, I also need you to, to jump in here. I believe we're, we're still the same. Like it, it's revised to be a little bit higher, but it's really the same trend line. Um, so last year, we our growth was a little slower than the U.S., and that is still the, the case. Um, <laughs> Kavita, can we, can we take the, I'm sorry about this, but can we take the questions on original versus benchmarked offline? Cause we have to look at different data for that and it gets, it gets kind of, kind of complicated, but we are, you're right that our trend line, um, for, uh, we, we had been above us in growth, um, for a number of different industries. And so I would have to look at how US was revised versus Minnesota being revised and how that shifted within the industries. Um, that, that might take a little while, but we can do that maybe a little later on today. Would that work for you? Yeah, sure. Um... Actually, it's not urgent. I was just uh, curious if you had some high level thoughts about it, but um, I'm more interested in the December revisions would be helpful. Um, OK, to get that. Um, so, yeah, let's just make it easier for. for what's OK, most, yeah, <laughs> thanks. OK, sounds good. Thanks, Kavita. And I did. This is Alicia again. I did put uh, my email address in the chat. Uh, anyone on the call is welcome to contact me at any point, but certainly today if you have follow up questions, um, happy to happy to work on those data requests. We do have time for another question or two, if anyone has one. Great. Well, I'm really delighted to have all of you on the call today. Um, I'm going to turn it back to Commissioner McKinnon um, just to wrap us up a little bit. But uh, again, please do use my email address uh, in the chat feature there should you have any follow-up questions. Uh, over to you, Commissioner. Thanks. Great. Thank you, uh, Alicia. Big thanks to uh, Angelina and Orion and their team. Um, 
uh, who tirelessly work on uh, these numbers and uh, hopefully we can get all of your questions answered. Uh, uh, and so appreciate your being here today. Uh, and as Alicia said, please follow up with any questions. We're happy to answer them. So thank you all for attending. Uh, it was nice to meet some of you, even though uh, I can't see all of you. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye.